Hi everyone, welcome, welcome to my little corner of vegan YouTube. My name is Alina. Today I've got a new recipe for you. I'm going to make delicious vegan steaks out of lion's mane mushroom. In case you've never heard about lion's mane mushroom before, this mushroom has really delicious meaty texture. If you cook it the right way, and if you marinate this mushroom in some delicious sauce or rub with any kind of seasonings, then it really absorbs a delicious flavor. Lion's mane mushroom makes a great alternative to store-bought processed vegan meats. So if you never tried this mushroom before or are looking for new ways to make it, let me show you my method for making it. Let's go. All right, so here's my lion's mane mushroom. As you can see, it's pretty lumpy and kind of resembles cauliflower, but actually it's much softer and spongier. If you look closer, you'll see that the surface has these little hairs. That's actually why it's called lion's mane, because these hairs make it look like the mane of a lion, or at least it does to some people with great imagination. You can find these mushrooms in grocery stores like Whole Foods or Wegmans or Fresh Market. Or you can buy one of these lion's mane mushroom growing kits. I'll link up a few of them in the video description below. Basically, they'll send you this log that's been inoculated with the lion's mane mushroom spores. Then you spray it with water a couple times a day. And before you know it, you've got a really nice mushroom growing. I actually had one of these kids a couple of years ago. And as you can see, it grew a really nice mushroom within just a few days. And watching it grow was actually a lot of fun. Usually these mushrooms grow pretty clean, but sometimes you can see little specks of dirt over here, so you can just cut it out carefully, and the rest you can just pick off with your hands. I'm going to cut this part a little bit on the bottom so that they sit nice and flat in the pan and not roll around. I have two big and two small pieces over here, so I'm not going to separate them into smaller pieces because I want my steaks to be, you know, good size. So first off, I'm going to sear these mushrooms on a hot skillet. I've preheated my skillet over here, put some oil on it, and now I'm going to put my mushrooms cut side down. Next, I'm going to put a little bit of salt and pepper. Now comes an important part. I need to press down on these mushrooms so that they get more flat and also release their juices. I'm going to use this lid for my grilling pan that I have. But if you don't have one, it's okay. I've seen a lot of people use another skillet that they put on top and just press down on that. My goal here is to flatten these mushrooms so that they are about the thickness of a regular steak. About three, four minutes later, I'm going to flip them. As you can see, they seared pretty nicely. This is exactly what I wanted to see. Now a little bit of salt and pepper. Next, I'm going to press down on them again. Now here, you've got to be really careful because the mushrooms are pretty soft at this point, so it's really easy to press down too hard and they could get pretty flat. Another couple minutes later, I'm going to check the bottoms. Okay, looks like these pieces are done, so I'm going to take them off. And this piece looks like it needs a little bit longer, so I'm going to leave it here for another minute or so. All right, now it's done and I'm going to take it off. Now I'm going to make a simple marinade to marinate these mushrooms in. This is a really flavorful marinade that's super easy to make. It only has five ingredients. You can use it to add flavor to almost any vegetable or a stir fry to give it that delicious umami flavor. I'm going to start with some soy sauce. Then I'm adding a splash of rice vinegar and sweet rice wine known as mirin. If you don't have that, you can add a pinch of brown sugar instead. Next comes chili garlic sauce, also known as sambal oilek. It adds some really nice flavor and spiciness. Feel free to use more or less of it to your taste. Finally, I'm going to add some toasted sesame oil for that really nice, really delicious aroma and flavor. Now I'm adding some water to dilute the sauce a little bit so it's not so salty. Give it a little whisk and my marinade is all ready. Next up, I need to marinate the steaks. I'm going to put them into the Ziploc bag, give my marinade a little whisk, and then I'm going to pour all of it right into this bag. Now I need to squeeze out as much air as I can, then zip it all up and give it a little shake. I need to make sure that the mushroom pieces are all in a single layer and that they're all covered in the marinade. 
After this, I'm going to let my mushrooms rest in the fridge for about 30 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to make this really easy and simple vegetable side dish with broccolini. I had some broccolini in my fridge that I needed to use up. What I like to do is I trim off the stems a little bit and if they're pretty thick, I'm going to slice them along the way. Basically, I just want them to be bite-sized. Once I'm done, I'm just going to set them aside for a little bit. Finally, 30 minutes later, the steaks are done marinating, so it's time to cook them. I've preheated my skillet over here, put a little bit of oil, and now it's time to put the steaks on. As you can see, I'm not adding any marinade because I'm saving it for later. Keep watching and you'll find out why. Also, if I add any marinade in here, then it will start splattering all over the place and uh, it will be a big mess to clean up later. After this, you'll need to flip them every couple minutes or so until they get nice and brown on both sides. Once they're done, they'll look just like steaks. I know you're probably tired of looking at this pan, but please bear with me. We've got one last thing to cook, and this is our broccolini. So my pan is still hot. I added a little bit of oil and just dumped my broccolini right in. Gave it a good toss. And now, remember that marinade we've been saving? Yep, this is what we've been saving it for. I'm adding just a splash just to add some nice flavor to it. The good thing is that mushrooms don't have the same kind of pathogens that meat sometimes has on its surface. This is why I can reuse this marinade for the broccolini here without being afraid that I'll give my whole family a food poisoning. You know you're done when most of the liquid has evaporated and the broccolini has turned a beautiful bright green color. While I was cooking my broccolini, my mushroom steaks got a chance to rest. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut them. The best way to slice it would be against the grain. It might not be very obvious which way this is, but you can kind of notice that if it's cut along the grain, then the cut part will look kind of more solid. Whereas if it's cut against the grain, then it will be kind of flaky, sort of like the texture of meat. While it doesn't really make a difference flavor-wise, I do think that if you cut these steaks against the grain, then their texture is a little bit better and they'll be a little bit more tender. You don't have to slice these steaks right now. You can leave them whole and serve them on a plate along with whatever sides you like, mashed potatoes, some vegetables. But I'm making this dish with broccolini and some rice. So I'm going to serve my steak sliced on top of the rice. And this is why I want to slice it right now. All right, let's do this. Let's try this stuff. Mm. It's really good. It's so, so flavorful. And the texture is perfectly juicy and a little bit chewy. Seared really nicely on the outside. That marinade, you can definitely taste it. It's just so flavorful. Let me try the broccolini now. Mm. So crunchy and juicy, since it's the same marinade, the flavor goes really well with the rest of this dish. So yeah, next time you come across some lion's mane mushroom, I highly recommend you try this. It's just so, so delicious. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you try this recipe, please let me know how it comes out. I'd love to hear it. Please give this video a like if you haven't yet. Subscribe to my channel so we stay in touch and you see more of my videos. I'm going to put this recipe on my website, veganrunnereats.com. And when I do, I'm going to link it up in the video description and in the first comment. Next up, please check out these videos. This right here is the most popular video on my channel. And here I'm going to put my most recent upload. So check them out and I hope I see you soon. Bye-bye.